The recent Fire TV remotes have a neat feature in that they can control, using these buttons down here and the power button, they can control other devices, not just the Fire TV itself. So you can be controlling the TV or maybe a connected soundbar. Now I got a set of Edifier speakers and I went into Manage Equipment on the Fire TV menus, looked down the list of soundbars, I also went through some of the other ones, and went down the big long list of device manufacturers, found Edifier in there, and unfortunately the model that I have isn't on the list. You can kind of see here that you've got a bunch of other models, and I tried each one of them, and none of them could control my equipment. So I'm not going to let that put me off. I'm going to use an Arduino controller. Uh, so this is really quick to boot and you can power it using the USB socket on the TV itself. And what we can do is on the left hand side, we can have the input of a device that the TV uh, does recognize. So let's choose some Amazon basic speakers and then we can use the Arduino to take in an infrared signal from them convert it into the Edifier remote control codes on the other side and control the speakers. So we've got an infrared receiver here on this side and then that's wired into the Arduino. We can learn remote control codes using that as well. And then on the other side, we've got an infrared transmitter module, which is quite a cheap little module. Uh, you can actually use an LED. Now I tried to use one from an old remote control uh, and a toy, um, but it just didn't quite work. And I think I needed a transistor to help that work. I just haven't got the parts for that. So I ended up uh, having to buy the infrared transmitter for about £2.50 off eBay. Wiring the components into the board is relatively straightforward. Here's the diagram that shows you where the stuff goes and how the wires connect into the Arduino. And one thing I also did was take an old USB cable and then solder that into the infrared module so that the I could have a longer cable running into the Arduino. That was probably the most fiddliest bit. Then we just need to program the Arduino. Now there's a GitHub repo with this code. Um, and then when you've got that, you can upload it into the board and pretty much straight away, you can dump IR signals and see them in the, um, the serial monitor. So you can see down the right there, I'm transmitting remote control codes into the Arduino and it's picking them up and showing you what that data is. And you'll be able to change this for whatever equipment you've got relatively easily. What we're gonna do is listen for infrared remote control codes for a piece of equipment we don't actually have, like an Amazon basic soundbar. And then we can convert those into whatever equipment that we want. So in this case, the edifier speakers, which aren't supported. To do that, we just alter the software, which you can download from GitHub, and you can see an output of the remote control codes in the serial monitor. And then you can copy those into the code for your equipment and control whatever you want. Once you've got the correct codes uploaded into the Arduino, you'll be able to start the TV and that boots up the board because it powers the USB socket. It's pretty quick to start, to be honest. And then as soon as that starts up, as you can see, the speakers turn on because we've got in the initialization block, we've got a power on signal being sent to the speakers. And then we can use the volume control and uh, the mute button uh, and those work perfectly. Powering down the unit, well, the TV powers down and then about 20 seconds later, the actual board itself is powered down. The speakers respond almost as quick as it is to use the remote that came in the box. So I'm pretty pleased with it overall. Um, you can build this for about eight pounds or less if you're willing to wait for the parts to come from uh, China, maybe through a site like AliExpress, uh, then it's easy to build and the code for it is relatively easy to understand. And you should be able to do this relatively easily. Check out the description for a blog post which contains even more information and there's also a link to the GitHub repo which has also a lot of information about this and you should be able to put it together without any problems. Anyway, I hope this has given you some ideas for how you might be able to get around the problem of unsupported devices on the Amazon TV stick. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.